Hello and welcome to the first episode of Let's Develop with Git in Eclipse, or rather Let's Develop with eGit, because eGit is the name of the plugin that allows you to interact with Git directly from within Eclipse. A first disclaimer uh, at the start, this is not going to be a, a deep introduction into the, how Git itself works, but rather a hands-on introduction if you have to use uh, Git for the first time and want to use it from inside Eclipse. So this is going to show you the very basics of the interaction with uh, Git and uh, the very basics of the idea of version control. Um, it's not going to be a very sophisticated introduction, so all the pros out there, this is probably not the place uh, for you to be. Um, but if you're a beginner, if you want to get started with using a version control system in your project, uh, this is exactly what you want to see. Um, another thing I want to say is thank you uh, to all of my subscribers because uh, since this very noon I have 10 subscribers on uh, my YouTube channel which is uh, a very big step for me even though it's probably a very small step for the YouTube community in general but uh, yes I want to say thanks and uh, continue please to, to give me feedback on what I do and encourage me uh, to continue with my work. Okay, from here on, I think we're going to start right into uh, our scenario. To start, um, the first thing I want to explain to you is how to set up uh, your IDE with eGit, which is actually pretty simple um, because you can install eGit from the Eclipse Marketplace. Uh, in many of the Eclipse bundles you can download from the from the website and install eGit is already included, but if it isn't, uh, it's just a few clicks um, to install the eGit integration for Eclipse. I'm just going to show you how it looks like. Uh, it's this one down here with the logo you've seen on the introductory slide and uh, with the, the eGit name as spelled here, so you can just search for it and click on install and everything else will be done for you. And that's essentially everything you have to do. Uh, the eGit plugin comes with a full Java implementation of the Git protocol, so you don't need any uh, external tools installed in order to uh, work with Git from within Eclipse. Okay, now to our scenario. Let's imagine um, that we developed some piece of software. Um, in this case, a Java project, and it's somewhat a more complex task, or at least a task that takes um, some time to implement. So um, we spend a lot of effort or a lot of time or whatever into our uh, implementation with some um, complex algorithms, and we're very proud of our results. Everything's working. Of course, it's test it tested and um, we're now set up um, to, to publish our state and uh, then at some point uh, we decide that we want to change uh, our very complex uh, project we have just created and somewhat we're afraid that if we're going to change the code we've written um, which is, as I said, a little more complex, um, we might somehow break it. And we don't want to do that. We want to have uh, the old stable version available and uh, we want to be able to at least compare uh, the old version and the new version or if we messed up completely, just revert to the old version um, and have some, some kind of safety here. So that's what we're going to do with the help of Git. As I just said, uh, I created this, this project as an example, and what I'm going to do now is save the current version of the project, which is all the, all the files and configuration, um, to a Git repository. And what I do is I right-click the project, then I go to Team, and I go to Share Project. Share means that I'm going to put it into some kind of uh, repository. I select that I want to use a Git repository and then we come to the heart of it already. Um, I could just simply create a repository in the parent folder 
of the project, which is usually the workspace. But for this, uh, for this time, I'm going to create a Git repository within a separate folder. And I'm going to be very creative with the name uh, and call this repository repo. As you can see, um, the repository is actually the folder repo and a dot git. So everything is going to be stored in this uh, dot git sub repository. And as you can see down here, it will take the project we have now. So this is the let's develop with workspace complex project. And uh, it will put this project to the target location, which is let's develop with git repo complex project. And I finish this. Git will do some magic. And now we'll see um, these little uh, tiny icons here and uh, this uh, suffix to the project name. Um, the icons tell us that this file is currently not under version control. So there's a question mark. Uh, Igit doesn't know what to do with it yet because we did not tell him. Um, the suffix tells us, okay, there's uh, a repository called repo uh, where this project belongs to and currently there's no head which um, means essentially uh, for you right now that uh, we did not uh, check in anything yet. There's nothing in the repository. So next thing I want to do is I want to really save my state, all my classes, uh, all my complex logic to the repository. So what I do is I right click, I say team. As you can see, there appeared a lot of uh, additional options right now. And I say commit. Commit essentially means uh, save some of my, uh, my changes, my files or whatever uh, to the version uh, control system, in this case, git. Okay, I click on this and for the first time since uh, I have a, a clean uh, git setup, it's going to ask me for my name uh, and for my email address. Um, and this information will be used to uh, uh, identify my changes um, in the git repository. So uh, the eGit plugin will store this information to uh, dot git config file in my home directory and will use this information for all further commits it's going to do and then within the git repository we can see this information to identify uh, that the changes uh, are made from me but we will see that in a couple of seconds for now I click OK and now I come to the commit changes dialog which basically wants me to insert uh, to insert a commit message, with, which is a comment um, describing the, the change I just, I just want to add to the version control system. In this case, I say it's the initial version of uh, my complex project. And you see here, there's the information I just inserted as the author information and also the uh, committer information. And now down here, we have the files I'm actually going to add to the version control system. The first thing is the class path um, and the project files and the, the uh, settings, uh, settings file Eclipse created, which are the very core um, files of the Eclipse project. Then there is our main class, which I just created, the one opened in the editor. And then there's a git ignore file. Um, I'm going to add this now, for now. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the role of the git ignore file somewhat later, maybe, maybe in another episode. Um, for now, just accept that you have to add it. And yes, then I do commit, which tells um, egit to add the, the files I just selected to uh, the version control system. And as you can see now here, the, the little tiny icon changed now to this uh, yellowish uh, thing here, telling us that currently all the files are saved. Okay, so back to what we originally wanted to do. Um, I wanted to change uh, my very complex 
program to do something differently and I was afraid to break it so I did save the previous state now to the version control system so now I'm free um, to change it actually okay so what I, what I kinda wanna do for now is do a very complex change here um, to actually um, okay no, I don't want to save the changes. This is be this uh, just happened because in the background Eclipse moved the files and apparently he did not update the file location in this uh, open Java class editor. So hopefully if I change it now and save it, yeah, uh, everything's quite all right. Okay, so now I did changes to my very complex logic and what you can see here again now is that um, Egit or rather git automatically recognized that I did make a change to the main class file and this is uh, shown by this uh, symbol, this leading symbol here that tells me okay this file is under version control but it's changed uh, in the current version as compared to the last version I added to the version control system. So since this is now working fine for me again um, I want to add this new version again to the uh, version control system. So I do the same thing as before. I go to team commit and say I want to add this. As you can see, it did not ask me for the information because it stored them. And um, I'm going to describe in my change which says um, made application more general. And you see down here that only the one file, the, the Java class file, changed and I'm, I, it's automatically selected. So I'm going to add this very file uh, or the new version of this very file to the version control system. Say commit. And now everything's fine again. Okay, what can I do now? Um, so far we have not seen much of the things that are going on in the background and you have not even seen that the information is actually st stored somewhere, but we can um, access the, the project information uh, through this team menu I've showed you before. And um, one of the possibilities to do this is actually for a concrete file. So let's um, consider the case that my last change did not really succeed. There's some, maybe I introduced some bug and I want to compare um, the current version with the old version um, to, to maybe find the bug. So what I can do is I can show uh, this file and the history. If I click here then there opens a designated view which is the, the git history view and uh, it shows me that there was a commit on this file, so a new version with my description, you can see it here about 63 seconds ago and uh, there was another one with uh, my initial commit about 10 minutes ago. So um, these are the two versions of my file and I can now say okay um, I want to compare these two file versions uh, with one another. So uh, what uh, igit opens here is an Eclipse diff editor. So this editor shows me the difference between uh, of a file of uh, or even multiple files in um, compared to one another. So you can see here that I have the package project, the class file. This just stayed the same, and it automatically marks here that the very change is in this line and it's this very word, so I ch just changed universe for world. This allows me to compare to the old version and maybe identify a bug and revert the bug. Okay, so this is it for today. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at that and leave all the other potential topics uh, to the next episode. I hope you could take something from it, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, learn something maybe about the basics of how to use Git and Eclipse and in the next episodes I will talk about uh, how to use Git with a remote repository 
and uh, how to use Git in a team environment where you have more than one person contributing to the code. Okay, so long. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, consider to subscribe to my channel or follow me on Twitter. I post regular updates on what I do. Um, also, please, please give me feedback, drop me a comment or send me a message on uh, what I could do and how I could improve. I'm always eager to learn uh, how I can make my, my stuff better um, to help you uh, more. And uh, if you're interested in coding in general, also have a look at my Let's Develop with Maven and Eclipse or at my Let's Develop Conway's Game of Life. This is it for now, and uh, I wish you a good time. Goodbye.